All right, I'll just explain to you what we're going to be doing today. Everyone needs to listen very, very carefully. If we have a look at the activity over here called Two Chart, we're going to open that. And you'll see that I've made a folder already for you in where we're going to save our work. So click on Choose. Now watch what I'm going to show you. This is called a process. It's like a form of work. Normally a process you show different steps. Okay, it's the action of something. And this one shows start. Now when you start a process map, which is what we're learning about today called process mapping, you can either choose the start, that one, the ellipse. This is an elliptical shape. Or you can use the circle. I won't get into database and all those other aspects yet but I'm gonna go with a circle so over here I'm gonna use the start being one now some people write the word start inside there if you prefer to use a number that's fine so I'm just gonna make a small little one to show that that's where we start one be the f being the first in counting now I'm gonna go and look a at a biological system we're going to be looking at the mechanics of a system and how systems work when we talk about mechanics it's not always working with mach machines it's how systems work and here we're going to be talking about a lion we're talking about biological systems ecological systems it's how animals behave in nature so we're going to go with lion is hungry okay let's go We'll just put lion at the moment. Okay, lion is hungry. That's fine. It'll is hungry. Now, th that's st the state of the lion. The lion is the condition of the lion is a hungry lion. So the uh, the word hungry describes what the lion's like. He's in a state of hunger. So naturally, we know that when animals, even human beings, when we're in a particular state, action takes place. We usually do things. So I probably will make it a little bit smaller than that. That's probably a bit big. 36 is way too big. Let's go with 24. That looks a lot better. All right. So when we've got this lion in a state of hunger, he's going to then chase after a buck for food. So that's also the, uh, the work of the body is telling the lion, I am hungry. So we know that he's a predator that is hungry. So he's not going to be like a buck. When a buck is hungry, it's going to go and eat grass. Because you guys learnt about that whole predators are carn carnivorous, they're meat eating. And on the opposite side of it, we have vegetarian eaters as animals, for example, herbivores, which you guys are saying over there. Thank you to that person who said that. So we know that as the lion is hungry, we know that the lion seeks food. And then on the other side, we got buck. So I'll just type something in, in a minute over there. But we got the buck on the one side, which is food for the lion. So the lion then goes and he starts looking for food. And that's called hunting. So we'll just type in. Actually, I'm just going to delete this. And you guys will understand why. Copy that. Control C on your keyboard. And then Control V will paste it. So the lion engages in the work of hunting. So he starts hunting. And in the process of hunting, remember, there's a relationship between this. This is the food of the lion. So the lion hunts, which is his work. So he hunts the buck. What does the buck do? Okay, so the, when the lion hunts, then the buck, no, not necessarily. Remember, buck runs away. So it's a competition. We call these independent forms because, remember, the lion and the buck are not like car mechanics. When the lion wants to hunt, then the buck, he chases the buck. So he chases the buck. So he's chasing the buck because he's hunting. So let's just cha change that to chase buck. Okay. So we got a whole process. Lion chases buck. Buck runs away. Then we have a decision takes place. Now, usually a decision is something quite critical. We, it determines whether it goes one way or another. So you'll understand what I'm meaning in a minute. 
If I make this a little bigger, we have lion gets food. And we're talking about from the lion's point of view. The lion gets food or he doesn't get food. So there's either going to be he either gets food or he doesn't get food. Now watch I'm going to bring in these little lines. Processing, showing the relationship. So you go to these little blue arrows and you connect them. Now the buck runs away. I'm not sure if my process is exactly right. And we'll go over here. So buck runs away. And then lion gets food. And we have another one coming in. I'm just going to delete these. They should be the same color. Control C and Control V. So I'm going to make two of these and make them really small. Because this one's going to have a yes answer. Just that one's going to be yes. And this one will be no. So we've got either the outcome is determined whether the hunt is successful or not. So whether our carnivore will get food or not. So let's say the getting food, yes, he gets food. What is going to be the action of the buck? Okay, so the buck would then die. Then the lion, what would happen with the lion? What work would he do after getting the food? He's hunted, he's killed the buck. Right, so the process of eating takes place. Now, some people say, oh, that's cruel. Yes, we understand that aspect of it as well. But remember, we can look over here. Yes, the buck eats, lion, the buck dies. So as the lion eats, gets his sustenance, the, on the other side of it, the buck dies. Now let's buck dies. I probably should do the buck one in a different color. So if I go like that, it becomes more clear when you see, okay, the buck I'll make blue. It becomes a lot clearer because when you study this, you see, okay, now the, the lion is going to then eat the buck. And obviously, the buck dies. But that would be joined over here. So you probably find we could draw, join another one. I shouldn't have turned it like that. If I join this one over here, I'm just going to take away that arrow. I'm not sure how to do that, but let's see if we can. Right. If you guys know how to change the arrow, then you can show me that. But then what happens is the buck dies and the lion eats. The lion then, buck dies, lion then. What does the lion do? Lives. So the lion then eats and lives. So, eating and the lion then lives. All right, so you're understanding that. But if the answer is this side, if the buck is too fast, in other words, it runs way too fast for the lion. Every time the lion chases it, the buck gets away. Then what happens? Then we have the opposite end on the, on the other side. This would mean lion is hungry, remains hungry. Lion remains hungry. Hungry. So, what happens when he's hungry? Watch carefully. Then we got to ask, if he didn't succeed, he chased the buck and he got away. The, the buck got away every single time. So now the lion says, oh, I haven't got food. What is he going to do to get food? Can he hunt again? So in other words, he's getting, every time he chases after the buck, and he succeeds, he's going to get energy from killing and eating because he's a carnivore. But if he does, he exerts a huge amount of energy and he cannot get food, he gets weaker and weaker every single time. So we ask, can he hunt again? Now, if the answer is no, he's so weak and hungry that he can't even run anymore. What's going to happen? What is going to happen to him? Then, then again, he would be putting his life in jeopardy and then the lion would die. Lion dies. So, if you look over here, lion then dies. Okay. But if, he, if it's yes, can he hunt again? Let's bring in the yes part. Where will we go to? If it's yes... 
Where are we going to go to now? Then he goes. Look, he's hungry. Then he must hunt again. Look, lion is hungry. He must chase a buck. But if he goes, if he's strong enough to hunt again, where is he going to go? He's going to return to, what's that? Right at the beginning. What did we use for the start? We return to one. So watch over here. If we go over here, we'll go and join this one to that one. I'm not making it really neat. But what you have done here is you've modeled out a biological system. And it's quite amazing because what you've done is you've used one lion hungry, chases buck, buck runs away. The lion either gets food, yes or no. If the lion gets food, he eats. The buck will then consequently die. If the lion is unsuccessful, he cannot get his food because the buck is too fast or the lion's too old. Or for some reason or another, he doesn't get his food. Lion is hungry again. What must he do? He has to hunt to eat. So he has to re-engage. He has to go again and hunt. He either is successful, then he, he hunts again. Yes, he hunts again and the process begins. Or he faces the fact that he is no longer capable of hunting and therefore must face the, the end. His life will then end. So if you look at this very carefully, you'll see there's almost a competition between buck and and lion. Remember when the lion usually will hunt for the ch and chase the buck, which buck are most likely to die? The, the most, the weaker ones. Because remember when all the buck are running away, the weaker buck are the ones that are a bit slower. So the lion kills off the weaker. And then what will happen to the buck that breed? They breed, the faster running buck will breed, and they will breed faster buck. What will happen if the lion is too slow? And only the fastest lions eat their food and can catch buck. Then that means that the fastest lions will breed and have babies that are faster. And that means that there's a competition between buck and lions that somehow comes out in their offspring. This is an interesting model. Boys and girls, I'd like you to also construct a model. Now let me show you where you're going to, where you're going to save it. They call these process maps. Very powerful. What they're doing is representing systems and you're showing by means of symbols. Remember, each one of these is a process. It's a form of work. And these are showing a deciding point when a decision is made in that system. The whole working together they call mechanics. The mechanics of a system. So we are representing bucks and lions in a system, biological system, and you're going to then make your own and save it like this. Go red button, save and exit, and you are 5B. So we go over here, and I made a system called Mapping Systems, and I'm going to call mine. I want you to name it properly. I'm going to use my name and surname, and we'll carry on with that 001, and if you do a second one, you can call it 002. Now, I don't want you to use the biological system I used. I want you to be creative and use something that everyone understand. All right. Good luck with that, boys and girls.